clock strikes, strikes midnight and she has to go, and this shoe that's supposedly a perfect fit for her and no one else falls off on the steps. Because that's super logical. What I will say is that many versions of the story tell a more logical version in which she attends three nights at a ball, and on the final night, in order to find her, the, pit, the prince smears uh, tar, I think, on the steps of the palace so that her shoe gets stuck and she has to leave it behind, which it more accurately explains it, because no matter how well your shoe fits, if it's stuck and will not lift up, you'll right. take it off. Yeah, even if it fits perfectly, a shoe that you physically cannot take off is kind of a design flaw. We're all gonna fall asleep. Well, within the kingdom, obviously. That The whole kingdom goes to sleep, basically. Honestly, not sure the, the whole kingdom falling asleep possibly forever is better than a single princess dying, but whatever. One of them has the potential of being undone slightly, although they do still miss out on the potential years, depending on the story, because most versions, it's a hundred years of her sleeping. Imagine that, you go to sleep because your princess got cursed and you don't really care, you don't know them, that just happened, you didn't have a choice, you just got roped into it, and then you wake up and it's been a hundred years. Any family you had outside the kingdom? Long gone. Friends? Long gone. Society? Probably completely different. Fashion? Definitely very different. And you just have to, as an entire kingdom, just deal with it. It's better than one princess dying, right? At some point she meets Prince Philip and they're in love, despite, I think, maybe talking to each other the one time, because that makes super loads of sense. Yeah. Love at first sight, guys. You gotta believe Nick to like Disney. As the Beatles once sang, do you believe in love at first sight? Yes, I'm sure that it happens all the time. It probably does, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't. Yeah, we're kind of both aromantic. I just put the graphic, like, behind us, like, coming forward, fading in. <laughs> Great graphic. She's a mermaid, and her dad doesn't like humans. She likes humans. The reason for that, for her dad not liking humans, that's not stated in the original film, but is stated in plenty of other versions, as well as the sequels to count as canon is that her mom was killed by humans. I think her mom was Athena, according to, like, The Little Mermaid 3 or something, but I'm not gonna count that part as canon, because that's... I don't like that. We don't like that. Don't try to bring Greek mythology into Disney, and do not get me started with the yeah. As fun as it is, I have thoughts. a really funny story about Aladdin that I'm gonna go into now so I don't forget it. Props to the YouTube channel Sideways for how I've heard this, but this was Howard Ashman's passion project that he died before he was able to actually get made. Rest in peace. Disney was originally going to give his partner, Alan Menken, basically complete control over this movie. But then, stuff went down, including them saying that apparently Aladdin was going to be more of a Michael J. Fox type, but they wanted him to be more of a Tom Cruise type. Those are both actual quotes. Mother Gothel is dead at this point. She, she's because the hair got cut. Yeah. She just kind of disintegrates. My name for that is the Black Adam effect. I'm not sure if they've continued with this in recent years, but in Black Adam's first appearance, the way they defeated him was getting him to actually say Shazam in such a hilarious way. Uh, I can explain in the comments if you want. What happens is, look, he gets tricked into saying Shazam, which causes him to turn back into his human form, which is now just a pile of dust, because he's been around as Black Adam for millennia. Goodness. Goodness gracious. First time we wa I watched Encanto with my dad, the second he heard Bruno speak, he was like, Lynn wrote that for himself, didn't he? <laughs> And there was this meme going on on the internet, you guys probably saw it, in which people would talk about how they had to, like, tie Lynn down to prevent him from voicing Bruno. <laughs> Another fun 
joke that's been going around is that Lynn has Disney with some sort of blackmail, and that's why he's in, like, all of their projects. That's a funny meme. It's obvious what, what the real reason is, though. He is inventing a new style of Disney music in the same way that Megan and Ashman did back during the Disney Renaissance. But it is funny to laugh at, to imagine him having, like, blackmail on the mouse. <laughs> and any time he hears a new project, he's like, So, Mickey... Remember that thing? Anyway, I think I'd be great at writing music for this. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you've somehow watched five and a half minutes of deleted scenes without having seen the original, check it out right here. And otherwise, subscribe and peace out!